is Ron Dong and I'm here to present about uh, my speech and our topic for this week is um, people's story, I think. And unlike other two our um, lovely teammates, mm -hmm. uh, I brought a very specific one person's story, not a broad um, so uh, story of, among people. I brought a, um, a story about an Oregon woman, Oregon is a state of the United States, um, Oregon women's assisted suicide decision sparse debate over death with dignity. And let's get started. And by the way, I reuse the PPT template. Uh, yeah. it's, gonna, it's gonna keep showing up because I don't have a lot. Anyway. So, who was she? She was beautiful, like in the picture. She was, uh, her name is Brittany Maynard, and she was diagnosed with stage 4 glioblastoma, which is a type of a brain tumor. And stage 4 is like the latest stage of the um, cancer. And um, she was diagnosed with that she was, only she had was like 6 months. Like in, in the soap opera, like the doctors always say, like, you have 6 months. <laughs> and it really happened to her. It was like a real life um, happening to um, Brittany. Mm -hmm. And she decided to end her life by death of dignity at age 29, which is really young, in, in her 20s. Yeah. Um, so what is death with dignity? So it's like a kind of, a, it's also called um, euthanasia, and it's also called assisted suicide, like I mentioned before. Um, you had to, um, you get prescri prescription for a a drug which is very um, heavy and it's basically like a um, painkiller but it's really heavy and it, if you um, inject amount of dose you just sleep to death well it, it's a really peaceful way to die per se and she decided to die that way and because maybe she was too beautiful and too young to die um, her decision sparked up the whole debate over the Death with Dignity Act. Um, I think that um, the problem of Death with Dignity is kind of a um, so-called basic uh, debate topic all over the world, but um, um, sh her, she just um, brought up again. Like, so the debate was really heated in the United States because of her action. So. That, uh, she really ignited the debate, and there was a, a very big debate over the moral or, and the religious implication. Because, um, uh, like, birth and death is like, you know, you, know start, you start a life and you end a life. It's like a very basic form, I say, the, in the ba basis of human life itself, and not, not just human, just life, um, which is often considered as a God's work for many people. And so there was a heated debate, especially over religious implication about the death with dignity. So, well, actually only two out of 18 of major faith groups in the United States supports death with dignity. I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not really um, shocked with this um, status because you know, like if you have religion, you like the probably the basic teach of the basic of um, the I don't know, basic thing about your whatever your religion is probably not kill somebody, yeah. including yourself. And they have to be really graceful and thankful because they got a life, which is a very special thing, and it's very uh, precious. So you cannot just take away, like, you just, you know. So, there are only two, and we have to look at why. Well, different opinions from very, um, to religion, to religion, and one of them is the Methodist Church. I'm sure, um, I'm not sure about in Korean, probably Gamnegyo, I think. I don't know, I'm, I'm Buddhist. I don't know about the uh, uh, Christian's works. But they, I know that they have uh, several um, divisions within them, and I think that's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, so, the Reverend Ignatius said that for me, that means that God is good, 
that a loving God wouldn't want to see any woman or, or man writhing in pain. So he expressed it that um, her, his support in that dignity, which is very shocking to many religious people. And, it, and he is especially irreverent. He's not just like a normal people. So, it's a picture of him. Well, he also joined the board of directors for Compassion and Choices, whose mission is helping everyone have the best death possible. So, he's working for an organization that um, supports death with dignity. And there's an Islam's opinion on that. Well, Muslim puts value in dying process. Not just the result of dying is not, not only the important thing, but the process of dying is also important for them. So Dr. Asim said that um, we don't have a good sense of what's happening, but there might be something physical that occurs that we don't know about. Like in Korea, we are quite, we are really um, affected by shamanism. So we people tend to think that if you die, like your your soul uh, removed from your body and flies away or whatever. And the Muslims think that way too. Pretty much, I think every every not not even religious people would think that way too. So they think that the dying process is also important. So may, they are against uh, about the die um, death with dignity because it's artificial. And there is an opinion from Judaism. The Rabbi Anson said that I have to acknowledge that technically goes against Jewish law because it's hastening death. But the point is that it's hastening death for life that's been artificially prolonged. So he pointed out that um, there are many people who are uh, destined to not be cured because they got like like previous the Britney has stage four cancer, which means pretty much you're not gonna live for a while and that's for sure. And he's he think uh, and we are we saw many people on the on the bed lying in there and they just put a hose in their mouth or they even cut up their throat to just prolong their life. Um um he thinks that that, that also is that's that decision is also artificial, which is pretty much similar to the death with dignity. So he pointed out that irony. So that's a picture of the Levi Anson. Well, actually his wife had a terminal cancer and she took advantage of death with dignity act. Well, but she, um, he said that she got the medications she needed, but she never used them. So just having them in her hand gave her some sense of control of what was happening to her. So he was trying, he tried to um, understand how the Death with Dignity Act could be really um, relieving for some people who are just writhing in pain, like really severe pain, and they, they will also probably suffer from not only physical um, pain, but also um, mental pain because they are not they know that they are not gonna live for a while. So he also think that the Death with Dignity Act has some point with that. So statistics. Well out of one thousand one hundred and seventy three people, well there are only seven hundred and fifty two people who actually used the prescription since the act was enacted in nineteen ninety seven. So it's not like you get if you get the pill you got you got to die like like the like the previous Levi Anson's wife people get prescriptions but they never use it it's their choice so well also there are different opinions from Catholic Reverend Tevez I'm not sure about his name anyway the Reverend good Reverend she said a time was appointed for our coming into this life. A time has been appointed where we are passing out this life, and we must always be good stewards of whatever time remains to us. Well, Catholic is really well known for their conservative um, stand for pretty much every um, matters, um, including death of dignity. What was the name? Killing, killing. <laughs> 
Abortion. Abortion. Yeah. Abortion. Abortion. Whatever. And Catholics, and they are really, they have a really long history, so they are um, relatively conservative to other um, other religions. And to follow up that, um, our mind, Catholic uh, Reverend also said, yeah, they are against about the um, death with dignity act because it simply uh, goes against God's rule. Because God has gave you a certain amount of time to live, and you just abort them, and it's not it's not okay for them. And there are other problems exist too, other than just religious um, implications about the Death with Dignity Act. Mm -hmm. Well, there is the Death with Dignity National Center. Well. Uh, they 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 insist that yet yeah, our healthcare system is not designed for chronic care. So if we are going to talk about death and dying in America, we need to be talking about redesigning the healthcare system. Well, United States are really notorious about their um, racking health system, healthcare system because they don't care too much about their citizens' health because you have to pay really a lot if you go to hospital. Like I, I, when I was in USA, I went to a um, dentist to just check up my teeth. And I, I, I done nothing. And so he just looked at my teeth and he took um, the x-ray about my, of, of my teeth and I cost like a uh, hundred dollars. Yes. In Korea, probably ten dollars. Yeah. Up top, up top, like the most pay would be ten dollars. Well, in like in, in case of America, it's a really big, deep down issue that may not be cared for at all. Obama is trying to, but it's yeah. too hard to do it because the medical, the, the drug, the corporations and the doctors are there just huge and they have the power and they have money. So, they, the center says that um, the the people with chronic cancer and chronic diseases, they might might have to, so they are forced to choose the Death with Dignity Act because they are not cared that much. Because maybe the prescription is too expensive to cure or prolong their life. So maybe they rather choose Death with Dignity. In Korea or in anywhere else, we've seen some news like, well, um, um, parent, Pull, pull a hose from their grandparent or their son or daughter because well they are basically in coma and they don't have enough money to keep them in the hospital anymore and uh, they are pointing out that I am ironic that we shouldn't talk, not talk about this whether we should do it or not but before that we should um, think about redesigning the healthcare system to take care of that and everyone including the chronic um, diseases of um, suffering people. So, they, they also say that death with dignity is not the only option. Well, however, what is life in Korea? I've, I've, many, I've seen many um, news regarding on this article, and when I see the comments below the news, well, 10 out of 10, like 100%, I always see a comment, something like, well, if if I like, if Korea had that digging in there, I would die. I would buy the I would buy the prescription. I would buy the pill right now, mm -hmm. and I want it right now. And I'm jealous. I I've seen like comments like that. I'm jealous of that woman because she gets to die. I was like, what? <laughs> and uh, in in Korea, um, it's, I know it's a way of expression, but mm -hmm. people just tend to say um things like. <laughs> well, I say that a lot. Like my mom said, like you should stop it. And, you know, it's annoying me, and um, I'm I'm not saying that we should compare ourselves to those um people who are in sick, but we should think that our life has some meaning, whether you have religion or not. Um, I think whether it, well, it's you. You know, you are already born, so maybe. You You'd like to have some fun with it, you know, not just thinking negatively and every minute. Like I know that living living in Earth is really hard sometimes. 
because mm -hmm. we have we have our problems, like all the problems, like why I look like this and I have to do this, I have to wash my clothes and <laughs> I have to wash my dishes, I know, I stop. And but once in a while, maybe we have to appreciate the, just the sense of life, not just our sense. Mm -hmm. Like, life is something that no one can make it, you know, but you're given. And I think that whether whether you have religious background or not, I, I'd say again, you have to appreciate it. Okay, that's all I have for right now, so and thank you for listening. Thank you.